What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Danny and Bush coming at you with the second part of the wide receivers, fifth part of the prospect battles altogether. Today, we're talking about Jalen Waddle versus Rashad Bateman. It's basically the battle for wide receiver three, in our opinions. We thought the Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase uh, video that you would have seen last week were the top two receivers in this class, but we're going to go through these guys same way we did last time. Um, attribute by attribute, uh, kind of position by position and how these guys stack up against each other. For sure. For sure. And as Corey mentioned, when we went through these attributes, we were pretty shocked at what we saw because again, going into it, these guys are neck and neck, but as you guys will see, as we go through it, once you break down each of these categories, it was actually a little bit more distant than we even thought it would be. So going into this again, I actually did switch my take. I had Waddle at wide receiver two for the longest time, but then when I thought about it in terms of a more uh, fantasy football type perspective, usage type perspective, I do give the edge now to Jamar Chase as my wide receiver two. But you guys can see, do I have Waddle three? Do I have him four? Let's find out. But before I do that, Corey, as always, I'm gonna hit the intro on them. Okay, so as uh, I was mentioning before we hit the intro, let's talk about it. Number one, analytics. First of all, Jalen Waddle was a four-star recruit, the number five overall wide receiver in the 2018 recruiting cycle, whereas Rashad Bateman was also a four-star recruit, but the number 61 wide receiver in the 2018 uh, high school class. So uh, anything analytically stand out to you between these two guys, Corey? Yeah, um, we'll start with the size because we always talk about that with analytics. These guys are completely different size profiles, yeah. right? You have Rashad Bateman, who's more of your prototypical X size receiver, 6'2, 210. He's kind of got like that Allen Robinson, Michael Thomas type of build to him. Whereas Jalen Waddle's 5'10, 182, which is more of the Tyree Kill uh, type of build to him. Uh, as far as their analytics go, in terms of the important ones that you want to be looking for, you see college target share. Um, and uh, breakout age are obviously the ones that are always talked about. You can see by a pretty a pretty wide margin that Rashad Bateman is significantly better in those areas than Jalen Waddle. And also, if you go to his college dominator as well, he's also better in that area. Obviously, there's some context to that situation. Jalen Waddle went to Alabama, where he had to compete with Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, and Devontae Smith. But Rashad Bateman, in his own right, had to compete with Tyler Johnson at Minnesota, and he did a great job carving out a big piece of the production there. 100%. Again, you're going to see a lot on the analytics community, especially if you guys have Twitter. You know a lot of these guys by now. Um, Rashad Bateman has one of the best overall wide receiver profiles, according to a lot of analytics people I know, really across the industry. I mean, you look at that, the, the college dominator, the uh, college target share and the breakout age are all... These are pretty much the analytics wide receiver. Darlings. Too, if you think yeah. of... If you're a guy, and there's plenty of guys on Twitter like this that are strictly analytics people, and they will... They won't even watch these players. They'll go right off the analytical profile. They're, they're going to have Jamar Chase and Rashad Bateman as the top two receivers in this class. 100%. So, uh, yes, as we mentioned, if the analytical people are preferring Rashad Bateman as either the wide receiver one or two in the class, he's going to be taking the edge here in this department to Jalen Waddle. But as always, once you actually take in the context, you understand the situation with Waddle. But regardless, Analytics don't care about that. Analytics care about the bottom line and analytics will point to Rashad Bateman taking a 1-0 lead on Jalen Waddle. So uh, going into the second uh, trait, if you will, that we're going to compare with these two players, that's going to be their separation and uh, the real release package. Like how do they get off the line of scrimmage? Can they create separation at will? And uh, Jalen Waddle, man, he is such a super efficient player on film. And when you watch him, it really just, it's crazy when you think about it. You, you're you watching mid-rep. You could be watching anybody on the field. And mid-rep, you'll just see Jalen Waddle just running across the field with like literally nobody even in his vicinity. And that's because, I mean, his instant space creation that he creates at the line of scrimmage with his movement skills, with his new like, – he's got underrated nuance. When people say, oh, Jalen Waddle just runs and runs, no, nah, he knows how to set up his movement. And once he sets you up, let me tell you, you're not catching up to him. Um, in general – right off the line of scrimmage, 30 yards on the field. It does not matter because people just cannot stick with this cat. He is going to be a uh, quarterback's best friend as soon as he steps into the NFL, in my opinion, because simply put, 
quarterbacks value guys that can create that instant separation. And there's nobody better at the, in the class, in my opinion, at creating separation than Jalen Waddle. So, uh, Numbers back it up too. I mean, his yards per route run in 2020 was a ridiculous 4.38, which just goes to show how insanely efficient he was. But uh, you can take it away with Rashad Bateman. How did you find his uh, metric of this on tape? I will. I will re- re- um, kind of rebuff what you just said. With he's the best in this class at creating separation. I think his teammate is the only one. Oh, who's better. okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Monte Smith, to, in my opinion, is the best at creating separation, but. When you think of pro- you're projecting forward when you're scouting players, yeah. right? You're not going. This is what he was in college. This is what he's going to be the ten years that he's in the NFL. No, Jalen Waddle has one of the best molds that you could ask for Easily. for projecting forward because he does things that you cannot teach. And there's a lot of guys in the NFL right now that would that could pray and hope that they could have the type of agility and athleticism that this guy has to be able to create separation. Because when you're that talented, when you're that quick with your feet it becomes very easy to create separation and, and release at the line and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's what you saw from guys like Chad Johnson back in the day. Everyone knows he has like some of the best feet of any receiver. Yeah. That, that's, that's a thing that he was born with. It's not like a, a, a thing that you can develop uh, to some extent. So Jalen Waddle's got it. And that's a really scary thought for opposing defenses in the NFL. But Rashad Bateman is no slouch in this area. He does it in a different way. Of course, he's a completely different size profile. He's not, running past people very often no. or he's not breaking off at this uh, uh and cutting on a dime but this dude knows how to run routes this guy has to get open create natural separation use his big body to shield defenders and at the release you said jalen waddle's the best in this class of creating separation this rashad bateman's the best in this class of getting off the line of scrimmage whether it's press coverage whether it's bump and run whatever the case is this man knows how to get off the line of scrimmage he will bully corners if they try and press him it, it's and- it makes it so easy to project him to the next level because generally speaking, this is a hurdle that a lot of NFL receivers uh, face when they first come from college. And I don't think Rashad Bateman's got any problem with it. 100%. I mean, we're talking about usage in terms of what we can see in the NFL. Uh, A lot of these receivers coming from the draft nowadays have to profile as a Z right away because they don't have the physicality and the release package to play that X. And if you guys don't know what the terminology terminology is between the X and the Z, the X receiver is the one that is actually on the line of scrimmage. The Z is the one off the line of scrimmage. I think Rashad Bateman can step in right away and be that prototypical X, can face that press coverage, can face that guy, like let's just say a Carlton Davis-like corner in the NFL who's going to be breathing down his neck right in his face, going to press you, going to get hands on you right away. Because let's be honest, he's got the physicality. He's got the footwork to be able to evade those cornerbacks at the line of scrimmage and quite frankly, just make them look silly. So uh, I do agree that his release package overall is uh, probably the most. He he had way more experience doing it as well uh, on the outside because Jalen Waddle is a guy that was moved around a lot and he was quite asked to just be like, Hey, Jalen, go on the outside and beat press coverage. Like that's not really how Alabama runs their offense. And why would it be when you had the type of receiving core that they had, but 3.45 yards per route run for Rashad Bateman is nothing to sneeze at. It's a very good number, especially for a, a receiver of Rashad Bateman's skill set and what he brings to the table because Jalen Waddle understandably so should have a higher number than most receivers because of his deep speed, because of his ability to beat, uh, um, defenses with his speed, he has the edge to pad some of his numbers, um, whereas Rashad Bateman doesn't have that. So that 3.45 is a very impressive number, in my opinion. But yeah. we are going to give the edge to Jalen Waddle here because, like I said, he's got feet you can't teach. Like, you, to create separation, he'll learn nuance. He'll learn how to run routes at the next level. And, um, and it's crazy, he too. He doesn't have the physical skill set, but he does have those tools that you can't teach. I'll briefly butt in. I mean, people want to th- talk about Jalen Waddle as he's just this raw, unrefined type receiver. Like he can run routes. And when I was watching, and I actually conducted his article for our draft guide, when I was watching him on film, I mean, he did show nuance to certain degrees. He can break off routes. He can find that soft spot in zone. He knows how to play wide receiver to the point that he's just not this ultimate project that a lot of people who are down on him want to make him out to be just because he's a fast guy like oh he's john ross that's all he could do no he is a good complete receiver that can get open with yeah. ways really like uh, let's be honest the basis of his separation is his speed but his movement ability his nuance his sheer understanding of leverage is so evident on film if you actually watch him so overall let me get off my water rant because obviously a lot of you know i love him uh, advantage here is going to be waddled despite Bateman having the best overall release at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think you, you, you basically 
I think if you went into that category not knowing anything about these players, the, th- the thing to take away is that Waddle's separation ability is going to be tremendously aided by his physical tools. Like whether he learns how to run routes as a professional or not, he's still going to be able to create separation regardless because of his yeah. speed and his agility. So hands, once you get open, I always talk about the way to frame receivers when you're watching them. You want to see them get open, right? If you're on the playground uh, throwing the ball at recess, you're going to throw it to the guy who gets open. Second thing that's most important is once you get open, you got to catch the thing. And we saw from guys like Jerry Judy, DK Metcalf, uh, CD Lamb to some extent that they didn't have the surest hands in the NFL their first season and they left some fantasy points on the table. Well, these guys also have a little bit of that DNA, both of them to some extent, I would say. I think both of these guys can catch very well. They have moments where they'll snag balls that they probably shouldn't have even caught. But some of their advanced metrics, some of their numbers indicate that they might struggle a little bit in this area. And for those of you that have actually watched Rashad Bateman, you know, especially this season, he struggled with the drop please a little bit. He had a 10.91 drop percentage, which is not good. It was one of the worst in the class. Of course, he had a limited season because he didn't play the whole year. But this is an area he does need to get a little bit better, especially given the fact that he's going to profile as a possession receiver. You better be sure-handed if you're going to live up to the comparison that I had for him. 100%. Whereas, I mean, Jalen Waddle, the problem really with him was just a few concentration drops because if you actually took in the the sheer efficiency of what he was doing on his targets, he caught 28 of his 32 total targets, and he had a 3.1% drop rate in the 2020 season. I mean, when you watch this guy on film, he's just a natural hands catcher who really comes down with a ton of impressive balls down the field. I mean, you're watching this guy, you think, oh, 5'10", 180, he probably has no hands, butter hands, yeah, 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 he can't bring this. No, he is sure-handed for the majority of the snaps that I watch him. Again, the reason why he's not the perfect prospect in this regard, like Devonta Smith would probably be like as close to, if not the perfect prospect when it comes to hands. Dylan Waddle is uh, prone to that occasional drop, and that's going to affect him a bit but because he's facing Rashad Bateman and his 10.9 percent drop rate you can't ignore the, the huge advantage that he has here in terms of just looking at the numbers alone and then when you actually watch the film I mean he comes down with the majority of his passes so overall uh Dale model takes this metric as well pretty pretty substantially and for those of you that are wondering maybe you're like oh well Rashad Bateman wasn't that good this year hit last year was his big year Rashad Bateman's drop percentage in 2019 when he did have his big breakout season where he had like 1200 yards or whatever he had a seven percent drop rate last year too so this has been a problem for him it hasn't just been this season yes he has a worse quarterback obviously with Jalen Waddle playing with Tua and Mac Jones the last two years and Tanner Morgan being absolute dumpster fire of a quarterback but there is plays where he he leaves him on the field and he has some uh, case of the drops as well. And speaking on Jalen Waddle, I wonder where he learned great hands from as a speed receiver that played for Alabama. Anyway, <laughs> yards after catch. This is an area that again, Come on. Probably, it's I not close. Know which way the sun's going to go. But <laughs> given the physical uh, tools of one player over the other, we'll give you the statistics real quick. Rashad Bateman averaged 5.3 yards after catch per reception this past season. Actually, a respectable number for a receiver of his skill set and the role that he uh, has. His number wasn't that much better than that in 2019, if you guys were wondering about that as well. But I think what was impressive for Rashad Bateman was his avoided tackle percentage. He actually avoided a tackle on 25% of his receptions, which if you're playing in a big slot X receiver type role, that could mean the difference between a third and seven conversion or a third and seven that you're punting. So if you catch the ball and you get tackled three yards short of the line, you're probably punting the ball. If that doesn't happen, obviously you, you're on the field still and you have a chance for more fantasy points. So as a um, a possession receiver, you definitely love a guy that can break some tackles and uh, avoid some tackles and potentially pick up more first downs. For sure. However, though, Jen Waddle. 10.1 yards after catch per reception. If he averaged 10.1 yards per reception, it would still be higher than Rondell Moore's uh, yards per reception. But <laughs> really? he averaged just, that after the catch. It's just ridiculous. Uh, odds that Rondell Moore's yards after catch per reception may be just close to his actual yards per reception. I actually, I literally will look it up right now. Uh, go for it. But yeah, uh, Jalen Waddle's 10.1 yards after catch per reception, which this one really caught me off guard, but 7.1 four percent of his uh catches he avoided the tackle which is really low um the way what i'm gathering from this is he was so good after the catch to the point that defenders weren't even in position to even get close to the tackling he probably wasn't avoiding tackles so much as just running past people which he's going to do it at the next level too it's not like a a college thing that's unsustainable he's going to do that at the next level too he's he's shifty he can he can avoid tackles i'm not worried about his ability uh ability to do that 
But yeah, yards after catch, like it was pretty predictable. Which way? Yeah, I mean, you know. when you're, when you're looking at why this is the case, why the discrepancy of those numbers is so real, I mean, this is a kid with elite elite spatial awareness with the ball in his hands, as I wrote in the draft guide. I mean, he is the most dangerous player on the field in really the entirety of college football when he is given space. Quite frankly, because again, that mixture of twitchy movement skills, long speed, all those factors combined, not to mention Alabama's ridiculously clean blocking on the uh, on the exterior. Like, I don't know what the hell was going on there, but it seemed like plays, whether it was him, whether it was Devontae Smith, whether it was Najee Harris, were d- completely blocked up. I don't know why that was the case, but whatever. Either way, when Jalen Waddle was given space, Jalen Waddle was either scoring or Jalen Waddle was making a huge play out of it, which is just insane to think about. You want to hear something hilarious? Go for it. Rondell Moore's yards after catch per reception was 6.9. His yards per reception was 7.7. I told you it's close. Yeah, that was this year. In 2018, when he has breakout season, he averaged 11 yards per reception, but his yards after catch was still like 7.8. So, I mean, it was still pretty high. Anyway, as we mentioned, yeah, we're not talking about Rondo Moore just yet. Yards after catch, it's got to go to Jalen Waddle. The physical Jaylen. ability, the the explosiveness that he presents. This is his calling card. He would lose this, this to this anybody is. in this class probably. Was, honestly, Jamar Chase might be the only one that can give him a fighting I don't even think it's close. I still think Jalen Waddle yeah. would probably win this category against him. So when I told you it would be a bit more distant than everybody expected, and then you saw the first stack go to Rashad Bateman, you're probably thinking at home, oh, wow, Rashad Bateman's about to win on a landslide. Well, guess what? Since that, the scorecards at home, 3-1 for Jalen Waddle going into the fifth metric. So let's take it away. Number five, downfield ability and in terms of usage, what they're going to be able to do at the next level. So, Corey, you can take it away with the actual statistics of each of these guys in terms of their production downfield. Yeah, and I I talked about this in my Jamar Chase thread. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, I put out a thread about my wide receiver one and why he's my wide receiver one. And I said his ability to affect all three levels of the field increases his fantasy ceiling. If you think of guys like Julio Jones, who's been such a great fantasy asset for so long, like Antonio Brown. These guys were possession receivers. Yes, they were the number one target on their team, but they also affected the field deep as well. And that's what you want to see when you're evaluating the ceiling of a player because you could be a great fantasy asset like DK Metcalf, but DK Metcalf is pretty much just a deep threat. Like he's not really a possession receiver. And you could be a great fantasy asset like Michael Thomas, but Michael Thomas doesn't do anything down the field. So if you want that full sustainable ceiling uh, over a multiple years, which is what you'd want obviously out of a dynasty asset, You want to see them affect all three levels of the field. So Rashad Bateman in this area in 2019, it was really a tale of two seasons for him because in 2019, he had a 29% deep target percentage. So 29.5% of his total targets were considered deep or 20 plus yards. And on those uh, uh, targets that he received, uh, the 28, he had a 528 yards and five touchdowns. Whereas this past year, with Tyler Johnson no longer on Minnesota and a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, uh, shout out Super Bowl champs, 9.1% of his targets were deep targets, 77 yards, zero touchdowns on only five deep targets total. So he was used in a completely different way this past year. He was used 65% of the time from the slot this year, whereas in 2019, he was only 20% of the time. So they pretty much turned him into Golden Tate. He kind of almost went from what Juju Smith-Schuster was in 2018 to what Juju Smith-Schuster is now, basically. That's kind of how they used him, which... It's I noticed that too. To both things, but I think he excels more as an outside receiver. Yeah, and I, I noticed that too. I mean, I don't understand. Again, it's probably just Minnesota realizing, okay, Tanner Morgan is absolute dog fart, so we got to help him out. But regardless, as good as Rashad Bateman was with this in 2019, listen to this. Jalen Waddle's efficiency on his downfield production in 2020 on only 21.9% of his total targets were considered deep targets. Yet, he still produced 329 receiving yards and three touchdowns on, get this, seven targets. Seven targets. I'm not making this up. 329 targets and 20 plus yards, and he caught three touchdowns and over 300 yards on those seven targets, which is absolutely absurd. This is just ridiculous. We Again, a lot of you guys doing the math at home, that's about 45 yards per reception on, actually, well, that's, on targets for 45 yards per target. If you think about that, if you, you guys know what I mean, regardless, I mean, this is an absolute freak freak of nature down the field that we've already talked about his twitchy movement skills. 
but nobody talks about this cat's underrated verticality. I mean, he displays tremendous ability in contested situations, being able to go up and get it. I mentioned his, his overall hands. That doesn't even go to show his tracking ability, his ability to really extend out of that five foot 10 radius. I mean, this is a guy when the ball is up in the air, guess what? He's competitive enough to be able to go up and being able to come down with that. People just wonder where he learned that from. Yeah, people just associate uh, cats that are 5'10", 180 pounds. Oh, they're just speed guys. Like they, they, when they think of Jalen Wall, they're like, oh, he's like Ron Moore. He's not going to go up and get it. He's just going to drop the pass. Yada, yada. No, no, no. Jalen Wall is a fucking fierce ass competitor. And he's a guy I can trust in that type of situation to be able to come down with those passes because he's proved it over and over again throughout his collage. And Please that's where the Tyreek comp comes from, right? You've yes. heard, like, I'm sure if you guys know who Jalen Waddle is, you've probably heard him compared to Tyreek Hill before. I don't, first of all, I don't want to hear anybody compared to Tyreek Hill in general, just because I think he is probably a Hall of Famer someday, because I think he is the freakiest, most unicorn receiver that's probably ever played football, just because his quick twitch ability is is absolutely absurd, along with the deep speed that he has and his ability to go up and get it. But those three things are what Jalen Waddle does best. So if we're going to compare anybody to Tyreek Hill, it probably should Jaylen be this dude, because the three things that Tyreek does best are also the three things that Jalen Waddle does best. Yep. A hundred percent. So I, I fully agree. Again, if it ever, like, I know this means nothing in terms of what we're looking at in fantasy football, but I just want to hear one day that Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill are just training with each other in the off season. That just make my day. But regardless, yeah. we went through the usage. We went through the efficiency. The advantage here is going to go to Jalen Waddle, making but it. I do think that Rashad Bateman has more in this area than a lot of people think. Cause I know yeah. there's probably some people out there that are maybe NFL draft scouts or something like that. And they've only watched 2020 tape of Rashad Bateman because he had enough games played this year that that's feasible, right? They might've only watched those games of him, but I encourage those people to go watch his 2019 film because he was yeah. used entirely differently. I think he can be a complete receiver at the next level. I don't think he's just golden Limited. tape, Michael Thomas, that he's used close Juju. to the image. I think he has the downfield ability. It's just a matter of a coaching staff unlocking that and using him in that correct way. And I don't think Minnesota did him any favors uh, his final year. Yeah, no, I, again, I, I fully agree. Uh, as much as I love like Bateman, and I do think he's underrated in that regard, regardless. Like, yeah, J- J- yeah. J- yeah. J- 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 Jalen may, may be the best overall in the class in terms of – actually, him and Jamar Chase are the two best in terms of what we expect their usage to be at the next level. Regardless, yeah. let's get into the next one. And Speaking, as soon as of, he- uh, speaking of Jalen Waddle being the best <laughs> in the class or something, uh, <laughs> the next category, if you guys uh, remember the, the Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith video, is athleticism and speed. Yeah. I, we might even only spend 10 seconds on this, honestly. Like Rashad Bateman, let's talk about him first, just because there's reports that he's going to run like a 4-3 or something like that. That's not going to happen. Rashad Bateman is a 4-5 receiver, which is more yeah. than adequate for the role that he's going to play. Even if he is a downfield, like even if they do use him more downfield at the next level, I think the way he wins, the way he hand fights, the way he wins with physicality and separates, he doesn't need deep speed. It's not a part of his game, but Jalen Waddle is going to run a 4-2-40. He's going to yeah. be a freakish three cone. He's going to jump 40 plus inches. He is a freak of nature. Okay. So, uh, Juju Smith just ran a four five, four. If Shaw Bateman runs anywhere around that, that's good for him. Yeah. Because that, that, that's what I, that, that's basically what his usage was this year was as a Juju Smith user role. Whereas Jalen Waddle, what Alan Robinson mentioned run? Didn't he run like a four, six, uh, Alan Robinson. I believe he was a little bit faster than that. Let me just check. Uh, Alan yeah, Robinson ran like four, four, eight or something like that. I could be tripping four, four, four five, six. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. If Rashad Bateman profile. runs Allen Robinson time, that's fine. That's yeah. what you, what you want Rashad Bateman to become is Allen Robinson. So, hundred percent. That's that's the type of speed profile that you need. But Jalen Waddle needs that athleticism, and he's got it in spades. So I don't think we yeah. really even need to I mean, spend too much time I, on this one. I'll, I'll say one thing: not only are Jalen Waddle's movement abilities the best in this class, elite in this class. They're world class. I mean, we're talking about about a guy who, as you mentioned, is probably going to crack the high four four twos, if you will. Probably he, right. There's a video of Henry Ruggs and him racing, who, and Henry Ruggs had a, a four four two seven combine forty. And not only that, but he probably would have had a faster one if his first time wasn't whistled dead. So yeah. Jalen Waddle has four two speed, like it is a yeah. fact. He ran stride for stride with Henry Ruggs in a foot race. Not only that, but everyone knows how much I love Ruggs. Jalen Waddle has, is a better athlete agility wise than Henry Ruggs, which Easily, is scary yeah. because he has that yeah. speed as well. And that's where the Tyree comparison comes from. So 
yeah, we can't say uh, anything else really in this category other than <laughs> Taylor Waddle's a freak. Hey, hey, bro, we expect the the four twos, but when, when he runs his exos combine and runs a four one three, then yeah, if Tyler <laughs> Wallace is running in the four threes. Jalen Waddle's probably running a three nine. Dude, dude, I wrote this article and I pegged Tyler Wallace at like four five three. Yeah, <laughs> and he's running four three nine. Yeah, okay. Jalen Waddle's running three nine. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyways, I mean. <laughs> We could we could tell you the advantage, or we can just say yeet because you guys already know the advantage here. We'll get into the seventh one, and that's going to be the intangibles, talking about toughness, IQ, etc. And dog. while I, well, I, I like yeah, just referring it, just be a dog. I want to yeah. see a dog in in alpha receivers or dogs. It's just how they are. Allen Robinson might not be a diva, but when he makes a great catch, he gets up in the corner space and tells him. Yeah, he tells him. So hey, tell him. <laughs> are you a dog? And yes, these guys are both dogs, but one guy is more of a dog than the other. And I think it's Rashad Bateman, personally. This is an area of his game that is, again, right up there with Devontae Smith as the best in this class. He's so smart. He knows exactly what he's doing. I think he's going to be a quick transition to the pro game for this reason. He's super tough. He's super physical. You can see it when he's trying to release off the line. You can see it when he's after the catch. You can see it when he's in the run game, run blocking. He'll run a guy right out of the club when he's run blocking. Like This dude, yeah. his intangibles are off the charts. And that's what makes a lot of people really like Rashad Bateman and really enjoy his film is because – he, he just knows how to play receiver. It's really all it comes down to. Yeah, and like, again, don't get me wrong. I do think Jalen Waddle is an intelligent football player. He knows what to do with the ball in his hands. He knows how to set up his blocks, gain leverage on defenders. However, when you're comparing it from a sheer physicality, from a sheer toughness perspective, because I think, I think Waddle has more in that area to grow as well. I think he can yeah. get better in those areas. Yeah, I mean, like, again, we're, we're not just going to completely discredit Waddle because it takes a ton of football IQ to execute Steve Sarkeesian's heavy RPO offense as a wide receiver to the extent that Alabama was able to do this year. And we already know how smart Devonta Smith is, but let's not discredit what Jalen Waddle, what John Mechie were able to do from the receiver position that offense. However, I mean, Rashad Bateman is just such a fucking uh, – this is like the asshole syndrome, if you will. Like, that's what he is. He's going to step in as a wide receiver. He's going to get in that corner's face. He's going to tell him, you know what? Yeah, you can talk as much shit as you want, but if I'm going for seven for 90 on your ass and scoring a touchdown, then, hey, does it really matter what you're saying to me at the end of the day? Yeah, that's, pretty much. That's Rashad Bateman to me. Yeah, and, and like, there's no no corner is going to bully Rashad Bateman at the line of scrimmage. No. Like, he, he's, he's a confident player. That's And here's the takeaway. We're going to pick one of these guys over the other, and you guys probably know which one we're going to pick, but yeah. – these guys are both first round receivers. These guys yes. are both first round receivers for a reason. And we also think these guys are first round locks, regardless of where they go in your rookie draft. So if these guys go to terrible landing spots, I would still pick them in the first round because I think they're that much better than the guys behind them, except for Elijah Moore. Cause he's awesome. <laughs> Rondell uh, Moore? I, have those I'm kidding. <laughs> guys. I have a tier of three after the top two receivers of Jalen Waddle, Rashad Bateman and Elijah Moore. Those three guys to me are the best, the next best three after that and, and to me those are the only five first round caliber receivers in this draft but uh yeah so as as you guys could probably tell what was the final score five to two Jalen Waddle five to Jalen Waddle and the takeaway from this is Jalen Waddle like we we know from an athletic from a usage standpoint is always going to really have the advantage on Bateman the thing that we got to take away from this is while we have these metrics pointing to Waddle and while we're going to favor Waddle at the end of the day here, if, if Bateman lands in a spot similar to what Michael Thomas did as a rookie and is able to gauge all that volume around, in or around the line of scrimmage like a Michael Thomas, that could completely change and reflect on what we have in our rookie rankings. So at the end of the day here, going into pre-draft, we do have Waddle higher. If Bateman lands in a spot like Washington where he could step in right behind Terry McLaurin, gain a ton of volume on that offense, which should be a better offense. You know what's which a good spot for him? Think about uh, if he goes to Indianapolis. Indianapolis would be fun. Because Indianapolis has has guys, right? They Cam have Pittman. Who they drafted last yeah. year. They have Paris Campbell. But it kind of is like an A.J. Brown in Tennessee situation. They had Corey Davis. They had um, Adam Humphreys, Humphreys who they signed that year. But none of those guys were proven. So if Rashad Bateman goes to the Colts and steps right in and is their one right away, I could definitely see something like that happening. And I think regardless, you're probably looking at a, a pick in the late teens, early 20s. For Rashad Bateman, there's plenty of teams in that area that could use an X receiver like him. Uh, whereas Jalen Waddle is going to go in the top 15 picks. I think Easy. New York, uh, the New York Giants is a great spot for him. I think um, LA Detroit would be the fun. Chargers at, at 13 is a great spot for him to go. There's a lot of good spots. I think uh, if he somehow made it to Arizona at 16, that'd be an excellent spot for him as well. Yeah, like again, like it'll probably happen to the degree that Waddle's going to get a, a favorable enough spot to keep him as my three. 
But I mean, I am absolutely not sleeping on Bateman because again, as as you mentioned, he is the clear four for me as well. Him, Waddle, Elijah Moore. I'm not even going to talk about like Wandale Moore and stuff because people are going to probably be asking I'm about him. I've only mentioned him 78 times in this video. So uh, yeah. people, I think they know that he, we don't really like him that much. <laughs> we, we might have to do a video on him versus Elijah. Oh, we're doing it. I, we're doing it. We're doing more versus more just because I want to rip on him. But yeah. If you guys enjoyed this, we don't want to rip on you guys. We appreciate you guys listening to this and watching this. So if you could do us a favor, go down to the bottom and like the video if you did enjoy it. Comment any of your thoughts down below. Comment literally anything. Comment the word anything if you want because it helps us out tremendously in the YouTube algorithm as usual. Subscribe to the if you are new. Hit the bell icon so you're notified anytime we are posting videos. We will be coming at you guys next week with a two-round rookie mock draft. So you guys are going to want to stay tuned for that. Uh, in the comments down below, uh, comment if you want it to be super flex, if you want it to be one quarterback, we're open to doing either one. Um, we're probably going to do super flex if there's no preference, just because those are the leagues that we play in. But yeah. if you guys are pounding the table for a, a single QB one, we might even do both, to be honest, next week. So um, if you guys enjoyed that, Danny, you have anything else to say before we get out of here? Nothing for me. All right. Peace out, guys. Enjoy your Tuesday. Peace out, y'all. Why are you